Hello, my name is Chris Roberts. We're here to do the long road. We're here at the Keene's Farmer's Market um, down here at downtown Keene. It's open Tuesday and Saturday, 9 to 2. And what we're going to do is we're going to interview a number of um, the proprietors here at the Farmer's Market. And your name? My name is Susan Weaver. And what do you do here? Well, I am a sheep farmer, and we raise wool sheep. And so I sell wool products here with wool that's made from our sheep. We have yarn that's been spun at Green Mountain Spinnery, and then I've dyed it myself. And then I also have hand-spun yarn that I've spun on a spinning wheel. I sell scarves, blankets, um, shawls. I also have knitting kits available for people if they want to make their own product. And I've written the patterns, and like I said, the wool comes from our sheep. A little time-consuming to do it little yourself? A little time-consuming, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but a little bit more enjoyable? Very enjoyable. A sense of pride of getting a it done? sense of pride. Um, it's nice to use product that we've grown ourselves that we feel we're really good about. Um, I like playing with color. That's my favorite thing, so that's why I enjoy dyeing and spinning. And it's just really nice to have a quality product that's locally grown. And when I look at, my mother used to knit all the time. Uh -huh. But when I look at the, your yarn compared to the yarn I see in the store, it seems to be a different in thickness. Very different, yes, yes. Uh -huh. um, one thing you'll notice about hand spun yarn is you can get a lot of interesting color variations and thick and thin. Um, so it's a little bit more unique than what you might find, um, you know, at Walmart. <laughs> So yeah, Walmart, everything's the exact everything's same color, exactly the same the length. Same. This is all very unique. How long have you been doing this? Oh golly, at least <laughs> half my life. <laughs> a oh, we very can hold long it time. <laughs> Do you have anybody that helped you? Or you just... Yes, my husband helps me with the sheep. His primary job is moving the fence and helping to uh, hold sheep when we have to you know, vaccinate them or give them worming medicine or things of that sort. Um, it's a two-person operation. I do all the artistic part. How many head of sheep do you have? We've got 19 at the moment. We've got, um, let's see, nine babies and 10 adults. And we do sell sheep and lambs in case anybody needs mm -hmm. one for a lawnmower or yeah. <laughs> whatever. So you breed your own sheep? Yes, we do breed our sheep. And yeah. so what breed of sheep do you have that gets the best yarn? Well, we have predominantly Romneys. They're a long wool uh, fleece, and it's very lustrous. It's very shiny, and it takes color really nicely when you dye it. And if someone can't make it here mm -hmm. and they want, they're interested, how would they yep. contact you? They could contact me. My phone number is 847-9763. And I'm only here at the markets on Tuesdays when it's not raining. So I can be contacted at home if you need something. Okay, well, thank you. Thank and you so good much. Luck. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Bye. And your name, ma'am? My name's Betsy. Hi. And what are you selling? Besides I, bread? I'm, <laughs> 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 this is bread, yeah. cookies. I'm selling um, Orchard Hill Breadworks bread. Noah Elbers makes this bread in a wood-fired oven. In a, so everything is local? Is it, is it organic or is it...? Mostly organic. Mostly organic. And, of course, we don't grow wheat flour around here, but it, he gets it from the closest source that he can. So that's his principle. <laughs> and it, it, the, the smells are, are just great. You don't it's, we're basically sourdough. That's the smell you're probably smelling. Yep. Then Every, you've got the cookies. Cookies? Chocolate dipped almond shortbread cookies. <laughs> <laughs> That's the tempter. Yeah. And then, of course, the very healthy cranberry orange oatmeal. And we always have a specialty every week. We make these sticks so that people can just quickly grab something to eat. Um, and it's made from our specialty bread, whatever we're having. And this week it's, it's uh, maple oat bread. And then Noah toasts um, hazelnuts to put in it and currants. Just yummy to grab and eat healthy. How long does it take Noah to, to get a day's worth of product out? Wow, <laughs> that's a good question. He doesn't do all of the stages of the baking himself. Somebody has to weigh out and measure, first of all, figure out how much we need from our orders. Then someone has to weigh it out. Excuse me a minute, my pocket's ringing. Boop! <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, um, because we use a sourdough starter, that has to be processing. He takes a glob of it and then adds flour and water to it, and it begins to rise. 
Um, so that has to be done. Then someone comes in in the middle of the night and mixes it. Then in the morning, everybody gets together, divides it, makes it, fixes it, gets it ready to rise. And then it rises in a refrigerator in a cool area all day. And Noah bakes all night. The wood-fired oven can hold up to 100 loaves. And it's an all-night process, though. And that's what he did all last night. I hope he's sleeping now. I hope he's sleeping. Yeah. And he hope he sells all his product. Ah, uh, we usually sell out. We usually sell out, and then I'll often sell the day-old ones, the ones that we bought back from our other people who handle our bread. So there's other places, not just here on Tuesday and Saturday. Oh, we do not sell here on Saturday okay. because we can't make, Noah cannot bake any more bread than he bakes for Saturday. And we sell at the Brattleboro Market on Saturday. And there's another bread maker who works here on uh, on Saturdays. But we we do sell at Blueberry Fields, we sell at Brew Bakers, we sell at Hannah Grimes in town, other markets, other, other places all over the Monadnock area and Vermont. Well, thank you. And see, it wasn't yeah. that bad? No, it wasn't that bad. Lee's my friend, the cameraman. <laughs> And boss. So, that's good. He makes you comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Please come visit us anytime. <laughs> and your name? Hey, it's Chris. Chris? Yeah. Well, my name's Chris too, so. Oh, good to meet you. Okay. What What do you sell? Uh, right now, just greens, um, salad greens, salad mixes. Um, throughout the year, I'll be bringing in whatever is uh, ready to harvest probably 40 different varieties of vegetables as, as the season progresses. Organic or all locally grown? I'm not certified organic, but I use the same methods that a certified organic producer would use. No chemicals, um, sustainable methods. So, yeah. so I'm pretty fresh, so someone can come right down here today, sure. buy it, and have it for supper tonight. I, I harvested it this morning, 5.30 this morning, and was here at 9, so... That's a little yeah, different than harvest. Fresh. It's a little different than harvesting in Mexico I two weeks so. ago and tracking across country. Yeah, well, that's that's our selling point here. So is uh, getting food to people right away, and they know where it came from, and they know their growers. So it's really important. And so you're taking carbon out of the air instead of producing carbon to truck it. Sure. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That might, that's a good way of putting it. Well, okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Hello, ma'am. And your name is Wendy Bowles from Bull Riggs Cattle Company. And I know, in, what do you what We do you sell say? black Angus yes. beef. Um, all the cattle are born and raised on our farm in Sullivan, New Hampshire. And we bring it to market on Tuesday and Saturday. We also sell at our home and through Hannah Grimes. And our burger is featured at Fritz's Restaurant. When you talk about a, a, a farm or a cattle, most people don't understand there's beef around here, cattle around here. Yes, ours is a small family farm of around 30 cows, including brood cows and, and steers that we sell here at the market. So it's not like being in um, Chicago or the St. Louis stockyards with no, thousands no. and thousands in the dirt and crime and crap? No, no. We, have, we run around 30 cattle at our farm in Sullivan. And so um, how long have you been, been doing it? Um, probably 30-something years, about 30 years. So um, we just started at the market about five years ago. Um, our children um, were in 4-H, and I grew up on a dairy farm. So we have farming in our background, I guess you could say. But beef cattle is a little bit easier than working the dairy farms? It certainly is. <laughs> you can take a vacation? Well, you still have to have someone watch yeah. them, you know, yeah. and check them. Our animals are out on pasture. Um, 24-7, they are brought into the barn twice a day and checked and fed a mixed grain ration that we have specially made for them. Okay, well, thank you. You're very welcome. Yep. Your name is? Bruce Bickford. And what do you sell at the farmer's market? Uh, certified organic fruits and vegetables, primarily. It looks like you only have one bag left. You had a uh, pretty good day today? Well, it was okay. I, had, I was light, and sometimes Tuesdays can be a little light, but also I... I was uh, picking up bees last night till I got home at 2.30 in the morning, so uh, picking up honeybees, and so I, I did what I could and got down here. So how's the honeybees doing this year? We've been hearing about some serious um, problems with them. Yeah, that's, uh, we do have a lot of problems. That's actually why I went once again and picked up bees again from a, a breeder that's actually in Vermont. 
even he had some problems too. But I, that's why I keep every year going to get more bees right now. Um, I used to have, keep bees years ago, had up to 40 hives, and but steadily there's been more and more problems, and nobody's really got a complete, there's lots of issues it could be, but nobody's really got the complete answer yet. Because yeah, I don't even see the queen bees, too many of them around my, my garden or my yard anymore, the flowers. No, it's true. It, that's one of the reasons I brought them in. I remember when I first moved to Walpole 10 years ago, I guess it was, it was August before I first saw the first honeybee, which was strange for me. So that's why and I, I, once I moved my hives up, we had you know more bees. So I do try to keep bees on the farm at all times. Makes It's night and day for production. And so you're here both Saturday and Sunday? Uh, I mean, Tuesday and Saturday. Tuesday and Saturdays, yeah, yep. Yeah. And um, if people want to come, they got to come early. You may be out of business, uh, yeah, sold out we, of product. We, but. Yeah, right now with the asparagus thing going on, it's uh, it's a nine o'clock item. But usually by nine o two, I'm out of asparagus, and we go from there. What's some of the um, other products you, you sell? Uh, yeah, we're gonna have the next big things, which will be the exciting stuff. To once again, we'll the strawberries will be coming very soon, and peas. Um, and then once we get into melons and, and any, every, every vegetable, basically, we, we do. so. And they're all organic? Yeah, we're all certified organic. We even well, do the corn thing. So. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, bye. Yeah. We are and your name in? Trish Anderson. And we know that you sell flowers. What, are these just flowers or are they herbs or what? We sell um, bedding plants, uh, vegetables, herbs, flowers, perennials. Um, and we do fresh market produce and cut flowers. And where are you out of? East Alstead. So that's not too far from here. No. And so you provide flowers and bedding plants all year round or all we spring We do long? all spring. And then we shift into vegetables and cut flowers. Yeah. How long have you been in the farmer's market? Um, my husband has been doing farmer's markets for probably close to 30 years. I've only been doing them for the last 10, so... It yeah. seems you seem to enjoy it. I do. I do. The people are great. You're out in fresh air. You meet a lot of new people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I notice that, based on the accents, they're not all from this area. The no. People seem to just drop by farmer's markets. Yes, yeah. Yeah, and, and not all of the farmers are from this area. My husband and I had a farm in Pennsylvania until 10 years ago, so, yeah. And so, well, uh, good luck, and thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you. And your name is? Hatsabeth. And what do you sell? Um, we sell bread and cookies and um, produce and plants for people to grow on their own. And I see you're from Vermont? Yes, Bellows Falls, Vermont. Is this the only farmer's market that you're at? No, we do Hanover, and we do Brattleboro, and um, Claremont. And so, what type of cookies? They smell awful good. We have oatmeal raisin, ginger snaps, and butterscotch chip. And we have a harvest spice bread, and a cinnamon raisin, and a whole wheat. So, what do you think of this? <laughs> Tell them about the hats. The hats. <laughs> Hello. Say hi. You sell flowers or you just pick them? <laughs> pick them. So I just picked them. They're pretty. <laughs> Say hi. 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 So you like helping your mom? You want to do this when you grow up too? No? <laughs> <laughs> I got a grandson who's only a couple years old, older than him. He lives down in Georgia. He picks his, uh, gets the eggs every Sunday to bring to Sunday school yeah. to make money. <laughs> He's got about 36, 40 chicks, and he gr they grow up every year. Yeah, we have chickens too. What else do we have? Cows and say it loud. Cows and goat and and a little baby cow. Yeah, they've got a bunch of goats. They want to get a cow for raw milk, but yeah. in Georgia. Yeah. The only way you can get raw milk is mm -hmm. if you own the cow, mm -hmm. so they're getting together with about six mm -hmm. families so they can have their own raw milk. What do we do with our milk, our cow's milk? What do we make with it? Put it in our latte. A latte? And what else do we put? What else do we make with it? Cheese? Come. Oh. Do we make cheese and yogurt? Cheese and yogurt. Is it fun making or is it better eating? <laughs> cheese is yucky. Cheese is yucky. No, no, cheese got to be good. You're not a good saleswoman.
This is a pretty nice hat. Did you make it? No, my mother made it. <laughs> Did you make any of them? Yeah, I made the ball caps. These? Yep. All right, pretty nice. How long did it take you to make it? Um, about an hour and a half. Is it knitting or crochet? Crochet. That's not that bad. An hour and a half? <laughs> um, yeah, the, most of the hats are all cotton, 100% cotton. Um, some of them are alpaca, like this is 100% alpaca wool um, that we get from Massachusetts. Um, the detail is quite exquisite. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we have all different patterns and we'll make whatever pattern somebody would like to. Made to order. And, yeah, and we have an email address that people can order from. It's H Surla, S U R L A. 20, the number 20, at gmail.com. You're going to be part of this, right? Yep. We, uh, we live together in big households, we share everything, and uh, try to run a farm and a construction crew and a whole lot of other things. <laughs> it's, you're, you're an organic farm? We've been certified organic since 1993. One of the first. Early. Yeah. yeah. Early. And so you come here often? You, you, I've been here, this is my seventh season here. So you must be successful if you keep coming back. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice market. It's a nice yeah. market. And the weather's good for you today, so. Yeah, and that helps people come out. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Your name, ma'am? My name is Kathy Burgess Fumicello, and uh, my business is Beaton in Eden. And as you can see, I have a lot of different gemstones, uh, a lot of different agates and jaspers and colors for every outfit. It's my passion. <laughs> and um, the farmer's market, you know, people think, do think that it's all about the produce, and it is truly, the produce is great, the fresh asparagus, but I am truly honored to be a part of the market. It has empowered me to do this business. Um, I feel like I'm one of the few that, you know, the fortunate ones to be a part of the market and come here every week. It's a great venue. <laughs> and um, I know my wife enjoys it because she's already bought two of these color um, bracelets. Oh, excellent. I hope she's enjoying them. She does. <laughs> yeah. In matter of fact, uh, we've got a seven-year-old granddaughter uh -oh. who always <laughs> likes to use them. She says, oh, <laughs> Mimi, these are nice. <laughs> <laughs> got to watch that, right? Yep. Uh, but they're durable. They're pretty they're durable. durable. They'll stand up to kids, too. <laughs> and how long have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing this market for three years. Um, I've been beaten, I've always been, be I've been a beataholic all my life. <laughs> it's, it, like I said, it's my passion. So um, once you get addicted, there's, there's, there's no help for it. <laughs> so. Do you ever go to the Guilford Rock Swap? I went several years ago. Um, they have mostly the rough stuff, though. So I can't, I don't have the means to tumble and polish and drill. Um, there's not enough hours in the day for me. <laughs> so I'd like to get over there this year. I always keep it in my mind. I think it's the third June, the third weekend in June. And um, I would like to go over there and see what they have because sometimes there is some cut stuff um, that I can use. Here's one for you. Where do you get these branches these, from? Oh, I get so <laughs> many comments on the branches. Aren't they beautiful? These came from California, and um, they're probably 12 years old. And at the time, I thought, oh, they're very, very expensive for my display, but they were worth every penny. I get more comments on the branches. It's a great way to display. Um, and when I'm not doing shows, I have a post and beam house, and I just put them in a vase up on top of my computer. All by themselves, not a thing on them. They look gorgeous, you know. So. Because like some of the small ones, they'd be great over the mantle, fireplace yeah. mantle. Oh, yeah, yeah. I probably could have sold these ten times over, but <laughs> I, I can't part with them. <laughs> They're beautiful. Maybe that's a new business. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if it's protected now. Oh. Um, like I said, I got they were about 12 years old. They've held up really well. Um, and they had been sandblasted and shellacked, so that's why they look so good. But um, they, they just work great. They work great. So And people remember... You know, they remember the jewelry, sure. but they also remember the branches. That's what draws them in. The guys come in for the branches. Yeah. <laughs> well, so, thank you. Thank you. And my wife will be back, and she'll probably buy something else. Excellent. She always Excellent. tends to come by around anniversary time. I don't know why. Wow, that's good. <laughs> you know, you can't go wrong with jewelry, right? Right. <laughs> thank you very much. And your name is? Sarah Costa. And what do you do? Um, from Manning Hill Farm, and we do grade A pasteurized milk, and we also do grass-fed beef pork, and eggs. Where's Manning Hills from? It's in Winchester, New Hampshire. Just right down the road? Yep, just 20 minutes down the road, down Route 10.
And um, free range eggs or just regular eggs? Yep, all, all our animals are pasture raised. Yep, free range, so, yep. So none of that sitting in the eczemen all day and just pumping them with hormones? Absolutely not. No hormones, no antibiotics. They live a very natural um, life outside on grass, so, yep. And so like you said, you had beef, you had pork? Yep. Chicken? Uh, yep, we're going to be doing some uh, meat chickens as well this summer. Yep, they'll be ready in July. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <clears throat> we were talking before, my daughter lives in, um, the lady over there, my daughter lives in Georgia and they have chickens and they use them to raise eggs. My grandson uses them to, to make money in Sunday school. But he's not really too happy about the, the plucking and... Um, getting ready for the winter. Yeah, yeah, it's a big job. <laughs> it's a big, big job. It's a big job. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and I see that you have um, maple um, syrup? Yeah, we do a little bit of maple syrup as well, yep, in the off season, so. <laughs> you it was a pretty good year this year? Yeah, it was, yep. And so the milk is made to, you order it, or they just come and pick it up? Uh, we milk our cows twice a day, and we bottle and pasteurize the milk three to four times a week. We sell it at three farmers markets a week. We sell it from the farm. We have a little store, and we also wholesale it in about 18 stores and restaurants in the area. So all your milk is pasteurized, no raw? No raw, yep, it's pasteurized. Pretty tough getting raw milk with some of all the requirements now. Uh, yep, um, it's just not the, the route we chose yeah. to take. We have a milk plant right on the farm, and, and we... Uh, we do it in a vat pasteurizer in small 50-gallon batches at a time. Um, so we just feel that it's a it's a safer, better quality milk that way. So the um, I noticed that I won't say the store, but you can go to a super a certain market. You get a no-name milk mm -hmm. compared to another local name milk. Mm -hmm. There seems to be a two to three day difference in the life of the milk. Um, the milk at the grocery store is ultra pasteurized and it's also homogenized, so it is um, made to have a, a longer shelf life. Our milk um, is non-homogenized, so it has the cream in it, and like I said, we call it gent gently pasteurized because we don't heat we don't heat it up as hot as them. They do like 280 degrees. We only do it to 145 degrees, um, so it, it holds a lot of the nutri nutritional value and the flavor and but it doesn't last quite as long. But it's absolutely as fresh as you can get it because it's right from our cows right to, right to you. So no middlemen. We, we deliver it all ourselves, and you can get it right here and at the farm and in the stores in the area. So. Well, thank you. Thank you. See, it wasn't that bad at all. Nope. <laughs> I do okay? Yeah, you did okay. great. <laughs> what about the farmer's market? More than just fruit and vegetables. Oh, yeah. Well, it the, starts out as fruit. <laughs> Like <laughs> yes, ma'am, your name is? Virginia Carter. And you're quite different than the, um, we were talking earlier, it starts out as fruit, but it's no longer fruit? No, we grow all the grapes ourselves up in Walpole. We have 31 different varieties of grapes. They're all cold climate and French American hybrid, suitable for our climate. Four of them are seedless table grapes, which I'll be bringing to the market. But that won't be until <laughs> mid-August, around September, when they get ripe. And uh, we make all the wine there on the premises, up in Walpole. We have tastings every Saturday. So if you'd like to try it before you buy it, you can come up on Saturdays from 11 to 6 to uh, do a tasting. We have tours. Where at? At Walpole Mountain View Winery at Barnet Hill Vineyard, 114 Barnet Hill Road in Walpole. And how long have you been making your wine? Well, let's see. We're going into our eighth summer growing, and so we st our first vintage was in 2006. And I'm getting ready to bottle the 2010s, so we'll be doing a little barrel tasting before I get those um, those all bottled, which will be in the next couple months. And do you just sell local, or do people? I'm as local as it gets. <laughs> I really want to keep it local and keep our carbon footprint small. We stay as organic as we can and still be able to grow the grapes commercially. And I don't know the name of the grapes, but I remember I used to, we used to steal them from the other guy's yard. The <laughs> because when I grew up in Massachusetts, they used, a lot of the Portuguese, they used to make their, their wine. Mm -hmm. But they had the, kind of like those purple, really juicy. You were probably stealing Concord grapes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, we don't have any Concord grapes. We have one that had, called Cayuga White, actually, mm -hmm. that has parentage of the Concord. Um, but uh, most of them are all 
cutting edge, brand new hybrids that are developed out in the Midwest uh, for our climate. Uh, probably a dozen years ago, you couldn't do what I do in this climate, but these grapes are um, very cold hardy. They're trying to make them as disease resistant as possible, so you know, reduce use of pesticides. pesticides. And um, a lot of them you can cure any of the uh, fungus issues you have with things like sulfur or copper, you know, which are organic. So it's, uh, it's, it's all cutting edge. So if I wanted to, to buy your wine and I couldn't make the farmer's market, where could I get it at? Hannah Grimes on Main Street. Uh, the Ingenuity Country Store on Main Street up on the Circle, uh, Burdick's uh, Walpole Grocery in, right in downtown Walpole, and then at the, uh, at the uh, uh, Walpole Farmer's Market as well on Friday afternoons, 4 to 7, and at the winery on Saturdays. When it gets toward harvest, I'll start opening up on Sundays as well, all the way to the holidays. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Thank you. So you can talk. You helping mommy pick flowers? No? <laughs> you gonna go home and plant them? My mama. Your mama? Yeah, you can talk. Do you wanna plant some cucumbers? <gasps> you you love like cucumbers? cucumbers. <laughs> we'll get some cucumbers, okay? <laughs> Hello. Hi. And your name is? My name is Karen Assing. And we know you sell flowers and I do. veggie starts. Yeah, yeah, um, Ruffled Feathers Farm in Marlow, New Hampshire. Um, have veggie starts, um, a lot of heirloom tomatoes, some old-fashioned annuals and perennials, and lots of herbs. If, if I go to some of the, say for example, Home Depot, mm -hmm. they don't look nothing like yours. No, I start everything from seed myself, um, and I try and grow varieties that do really well where we are here. Um, living in Marlow, if well, lots of times it's an ice box of Cheshire County, yeah. so I try and grow things that do well in a shorter season. And um, This whole business kind of started as um, I always had a big garden myself and lots of plants left over, and it just has slowly grown from there. So everything I sell are things I, I plant myself and varieties I've had good luck with in this, in this part of the world. And I, I saw in your sign you said a, a lot of hybrids. You develop your own? Um, or you just... No, I have a few hybrid types of tomatoes because it's good to always sort of hedge your bets. A lot of the heirlooms have great flavor but um, are, tend to be a bit more disease prone and later in the season, so it's best to plant a mix of both. Um, what I have is primarily heirlooms because they taste the best, but I always, in Marlow, like to hedge my bets <laughs> with something, an earlier type of tomato. And so the, the, the hybrids help protect? Um, the hybrids tend to have a bit more disease resistant. They tend to be a little bit earlier. Um, one disadvantage is you can't save the seeds from a hybrid tomato because you won't, it, well, they won't come true as to what you've eaten that season. Um, where the heirloom tomatoes, you, you can do that, which is a lot of people who like to save their own seeds, and that's, that's what you need. <laughs> and how long have you been doing this? Um, about 10 years, I guess, now. Yeah. And yeah. you seem to enjoy it really well? I love it. Yes. Outside, fresh air. Outside, fresh air. Yeah, change the seasons. It's always something new and always a challenge. Every year is <laughs> a little different. So as the seasons go along, you bring in some of the product you produce? Um, actually, I don't. Um, I just come in the spring with, with the plant things. I'm from my house. I sell broiler chickens um, and rabbit meat and eggs. Um, so I have some other stuff I do at home. But as far as the markets, I just come in the spring with the, the plants. Well, thank you. Yep, thank you. Yep.